Welcome to Gallia Belgica, an ancient Roman province that consisted of today's Belgium, Luxembourg and Northern France, but also smaller parts of Germany and the Netherlands. Gallia Belgica was incorporated to the Roman Empire during the Gallic Wars, which was fought between Julius Caesar and the tribes of modern-day France, Switzerland, Belgium, Luxembourg and Germany west of the Rhine. The Roman legions encountered many warlike and powerful enemies during their conquest of Gaul, which took place between 58 and 50 BC. But their most ferocious opponents were probably the Belgae. The Belgae was not a single nation or kingdom, but rather a confederation of pugnacious and bloodthirsty tribes, which lived in the northernmost part of Gaul. The Belgae came into direct conflict with the Romans in 57 BC. Caesar, who at this point had already conquered much of Gaul, was in his winter quarters when he heard rumors that several northern tribes had formed an anti-Roman alliance and were raising an army. The Belgae chose Galba, king of the Socianis, as their supreme commander. Galba began not by attacking Rome directly, but by attacking the Ramai, a Gallic tribe which had actually chosen to ally themselves with the Roman invaders. The Ramai called for aid, and Rome answered. Caesar immediately moved north. He sent auxiliary forces to the Ramai and set up camp just a few miles from the Belgae borders. The Romans really dug themselves in by building trenches and provisional forts made of tree. That way, the Romans could control the influx of any invading enemy warriors and attack them with catapults from a safe distance. The Belgae soon redirected their attention from the Ramai to the Romans. King Galba tried to attack the Roman camp by circumventing the Roman fortifications and crossing the river Ain, which served as a sort of natural protection of the rear of the Roman camp. But Caesar interrupted this clever maneuver by charging the Belgae attackers with his cavalry and his light infantry. The Belgae were forced to retreat. In the meanwhile, Caesar's Gallic allies had set out to attack the Belgae tribes in their own territories. King Galba's forces already suffered from a lack of provisions, and now many of the tribesmen were forced to return home to protect their own peoples. The Belgae had no choice but to withdraw, which they did in a very unorganized fashion. Caesar saw the great opportunity that this presented. Now was the time for action. Legions, as well as the cavalry, came pouring out of the Roman camp. They harassed the fleeing Belgae and killed thousands of them. This was Caesar's first great victory in northern Gaul. Shortly afterwards, the Susanis capitulated and bowed before the Roman eagle. The Belgae coalition was now broken, and the remaining tribes were crushed at the Battle of Sabis and the siege of the Atuatuci. The lands of northern Gaul were thusly incorporated to the Roman Empire, even though Gallia Bellica didn't officially become a Roman province until 22 BC. But who were the people that Caesar had conquered? We have already mentioned the Remi and the Susanis. The Remi were the first Roman allies in the Belgic region. They distinguished themselves from the other regional tribes by being relatively economically advanced. They minted their own coins and maintained trade connections with the Mediterranean world. And the Remi elite, which had grown rich on both agriculture and mining, were heavily influenced by Roman culture. They were also, however, in a political union with the Susenis, a main member tribe of the Belgae Federation. They shared the same laws and military commander. It is very likely, though, that the Ramai felt suppressed in this union. This might be why the Ramai were so quick to join forces with the Romans. To them, Caesar's invasion might have seemed like an opportunity to be liberated from an unequal alliance that had been forced upon them. It does seem likely that the Ramai were subordinate to the Sasanis, when considering the latter's prominent position within the Belgae alliance because all Belgae tribes agreed that Galba, king of the Susenis, should be in charge of the war, and Galba's legendary predecessor, King Diviciacus of the Susenis, was thought to have been a mighty king in both Gaul and Britannia. But another tribe, the Belovaci, should have been the most powerful tribe within the Belgae, at least as far as manpower is concerned. The Belovaci, according to Caesar, who got his information from the Remi ambassadors, could muster an army of 100,000 men. This number should be taken with a grain of salt though, to say the least. The video maker would never go so far as to call Julius Caesar a liar, but let's just say that some of the numbers that Caesar reported may have been slightly exaggerated. Nota bene that Caesar, who at the time ruled three Roman provinces, commanded eight legions, or about 40,000 Roman soldiers. How could some local Belgae tribe have more than twice that number? The Belovaci might have been the most numerous of the Belgae tribes, but they were not the most warlike. That honor goes instead to the Nervi. The Nervi was the bravest and most ferocious of the Belgae tribes and among the last, to capitulate to the Roman invaders. One could almost describe them as the Spartans of Gaul. Gallia Bellica hosted many lesser tribes as well, such as the Atuatuci, the Atrebates, the Veneti, and the Germani Cisrenani. Germani Cisrenani referred to Germanic tribesmen who lived on the western, or Gallic side, of the river Rhine. And this raises an interesting question. Were the nations of Gallia Bellica Celtic or Germanic? Most Gauls were of Celtic stock, but Caesar believed that the Belgae were different. 
Caesar claimed that many of these tribes were Germanic rather than Celtic, and that the region as a whole had Germanic ancestry and shared cultural similarities with the Germanic tribes. Some of the Belgae apparently descended from the Cimbri and the Teutones, two Germanic nations that seriously challenged the Roman Republic before the time of Julius Caesar. Today, most scholars agree that the Belgae spoke a Celtic language despite any Germanic influences. The Belgae were subdued by Caesar and incorporated to the very late Roman Republic, which soon became the Roman Empire. Their name survived in Gallia Belgica and survives to this day in Belgium, the country which was named after them. But the entire Belgic region still became thoroughly Romanized. Gallia Belgica was officially established as a Roman province in 22 BC under the reign of Augustus, the first Roman emperor. After that, the region remained Roman for almost 500 years, and the Roman legacy still remains. They left behind the famous Roman roads, and cities such as Roas and Trier, as well as a never-ending cultural impact. In many ways, Gallia Belgica is still standing. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. Comment Gallia Aquitania if you want my next video to be about one of the most violent and mysterious provinces in the Roman Empire. And comment Brutus' mom if you want my next video to be an honest review of Servilia, who was Brutus' mother. Have a good one, buddy.